السلام عليكم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The word angels or malaika is mentioned more than 60 times in the Quran. Allah refers to them as a form of his creation who are obedient to him and ready to perform the tasks assigned to them. What kind of creation are angels? What is their nature? Why are they mentioned in the Quran? What is their role and function? Some people conceptualize angels uh, according to Western ideas, a human-like appearance. You know, as a white female with two wings, uh, two white wings and a halo above the head, and they come in child and adult sizes. In Islam, this is a false representation of the angels. The term malaika is a plural form of malaka. Not to be confused with malik or malik, which means owner or king, which has a plural form of muluk. We do not know about the nature of their creation other than what Allah has chosen to share with us in the Quran. However, they are mentioned in the Quran merely for us to understand their tasks as they relate to us, to our life in this world and the next. Plus, letting us know the fact that Allah created beings that exist in perhaps other dimensions like angels who have their own roles. Let's talk about their roles first, and then we will discuss their nature. Believing in, in angels is part of our Islamic system or article of faith. Similar to believing in Allah, His prophets, His books, and the last day. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله And so do believers. Each one believes in Allah and his angels uh, and his scriptures and his messengers. We make no distinction between any of his messengers. Chapter 2 verse 285. Muhammad Abdu, who was a uh, scholar and reformer from late 1800s, describes angels as he says, quote, The phys physicists assert that we have two major components in the physical universe, matter and energy or force, which is something the materialists also accept, unquote. Then he adds, quote, these forms of energy do possess awareness and management, unquote. He gives an example, like when you look at a flower, flower, you see that if one has a dot or a specific mixture of colors and pattern on one leaf or a section of it, the other leaf on the opposite side has the same. And it repeats in every flower on, the, on that plant or tree. It is almost like a painting done by a painting artist who knew or had a plan or arrangement on what to draw. He then concludes that such works in creation are made by forces that manage and arrange things with pre-planned design or awareness. You can then imagine for every piece of creation or natural activity around us, there are such forces at play. And this conforms to the concept of angels and their tasks of arranging, governing, or managing 
as Allah says in the Quran, Fal Mudabirati Amra. And those who govern or arrange the events, chapter 79, verse 5. Those here in the verse refers to the angels as mentioned by their tasks in the previous verses of chapter 79. Meaning there are forces in nature who govern or manage the affairs of this world, making sure all events occur as intended. Quran presents this topic in multiple verses and in multiple ways. It talks about the harmony and cohesiveness of their work in conducting affairs. In other words, if each force acted independently on their own or on his own, then chaos would replace the order and control. That is, these forces, which we call angels, function under Allah's command and supervision. Therefore, we can describe angels in such a way that our explanation is not in contradiction with the Qur'an, yet plausible by logic and our limited knowledge. Qur'an describes some angels have formative tasks, meaning they have a role in the order, control, and maintenance of universe when it says, amra, and those angels who govern or arrange the events. And by the way, it is in, in the plural form, so it's not talking about God himself, rather those who are under his command. We also have تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ the angels and the spirit descend by the permission of their Lord upon every command. Chapter 97, verse 4. Some are messengers tasked to deliver the divine revelation to the prophets, as the Quran says, Allahu yastafi min al malaikatihi rusulan wa min al nas. Allah chooses messengers from angels and from mankind chapter 22 verse 75 which is a comprehensive way of describing the delivery of divine message through angels which is delivering the message which then deliver the message to the prophets who are of mankind as they then deliver the message to their people some are tasked to cause death and take the souls of humans. We know that our ruh, our soul, separates from our physical body when we die. Where does it go? That is what angels of death do, to take the life and guide our soul, our ruh, to a designated place. Al-ladina tatawafahumul malaikatu tayyibin. يَقُولُونَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ دْخُلُوا جَنَّةَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Those whom the angels cause to die, when they are good, they say, Peace be upon you. Enter paradise as a reward for your good deeds. Chapter 16, verse 32. And of course, regarding those destined to hell, they are driven by angels to hell which are also referred to as keepers of hell, who will question them. Like, for example, in chapter 39, verse 71, it says, The unbelievers shall be driven into hell in companies. As they draw near, its gates will, uh, you know, means hell's gates will be open, and its keepers will ask them, Didn't a messenger of your own come to you who recited to you the verses of the verses of your Lord and warned you of encounter of this day some angels are there to protect us some angels are there to protect us K 
Can you recall that specific instance in your life when you were saved from a danger or an accident or a difficult situation? Some even say, quote, miraculously. Some say, I can't explain it. Some say, don't know what happened. Then there are angels who record our deeds and keep these records. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِذِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْعَلُونَ And indeed, over you are appointed angels to protect you, kind and honorable, writing down your deeds. They know all that you do. Chapter 82, verses 10 through 12. We have instances where Allah sent down His angels to help and support the believers in the battle. As the Quran says, إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَأُلْقِيَ فِي غُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّعْبَ When you, when your Lord inspired the angels, saying, I am with you, so make those who believe stand firm. I will cast fear into the hearts of those who disbelieve, which the disbeliever being the enemy of the believers. Chapter 8, verse 12. Then, according to the Qur'an, there are angels who perform other tasks, especially in the Judgment Day, um, such as greeting and welcoming the believers, praying for the believers, also those questioning and cursing, scorning the sinners and disbelievers. These are some of the tasks performed by the angels as they relate to us. Few angels are named in the scriptures. Man kana aduwan lillah wal malaikatihi wa rusulihi wa jibrila wa mikala fa inna Allah aduwan lil kafirin. Whoever is an enemy of Allah, his angels, his messengers, Gabriel, Jibril, and Mikael, indeed Allah is the enemy of the unbeliever. Chapter 2, verse 98. Same in the Bible. As it says, the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Luke chapter 1, verse 19. Now, what is the nature of angels? We do not know much about the nature of angels other than what Allah has described in the Qur'an. They are creatures without gender, without free will, or instinct. They were created before humans and created to execute Allah's commands. Scriptures tell us that Angels do only good, but that is because they are not capable of evil. Perhaps that is why when we talk about a person who is innocent or a child, we refer to him or her as angel. Now, according to a hadith in Sahih Muslim and few others, angels are made of light. If that is the case, one can assume the following to be plausible. The human eye can only see visible light, but light comes in many other colors or waves, radio, radio waves, infrared, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray, all of which our eyes cannot see much like the air around us, that we may feel its presence, but cannot see it. 
one has to have the belief in qayb or unseen in order to feel the presence of angels, spiritually, of course. According to Dr. Ibrahim Sayyid, quote, there is nothing wrong in attempting to understand or to interpret the concept of angels in light of modern science and knowledge. After all, Muslims and scientists are seekers of the truth, and truth is the same in either domain." Unquote. He then suggests that the scientific concept which closely describes the angels, assuming, of course, they are made of light, is the electromagnetic force or electromagnetic radiation. If angels are made of light, then light is made of electromagnetic radiation, which travels at 186,000 miles per second. Like angels, electromagnetic force obeys the laws of nature nonstop, without mistake, and has no free will or an independent will of its own. Hence, it has a one-dimensional nature like angels. Electromagnetic radiation has no gender or emotions and has no instincts or biological urges, and it is invisible. Dr. Sayed then adds, quote, the Quran mentions that angels came to Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Lut, peace be upon them, in the form of humans. And the Hadith mentions about Angel Jibril, Gabriel, um, talking to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the form of human being. This is also not difficult to understand because we can create holographic images, which are three-dimensional human figures that can talk using white light uh, or visible light. Again, laser light and white light are electromagnetic radiation. The communication part of it, the talking part of it, is possible by means of radio waves or microwaves, which are also electromagnetic radiation. So that's uh, his theory. There are also other theories about the nature of angels. However, we do not know anything for certain as the Qur'an does not go into their nature in detail. The Qur'an does talk about their wings. As it says, Alhamdulillahi fatir samawati wal ardi ja'ilul mala'ikatihi rusulan uli ajnahatin Mathna wa thulatha wa ruba'a yazidu fi khalqa fi al-khalqa ma yasha'a. Now, it means praise, to, uh, praise be to Allah who created out of nothing the heavens and the earth, who made the angels messengers with wings, two or three or four. He adds to creation as he wills. Chapter 35, verse 1. Let's explain this verse. The verse refers to the physical built, or what can be seen, as well as inward or obscure built, referring to what cannot be seen within the universe. The surah starts with glorifying God who created the heavens and the earth, both of which can be seen, and then saying that angels are God's messengers to his chosen servants on earth. The message they bring is the greatest thing in life. Hence, God follows the reference to his creation of the heavens and the earth by mentioning the role of the angels, whereby it is they who make contact between 
heaven and earth fulfilling the greatest task of all as they deliver his message. For the first time in the Quran, we have a physical description of the angels. Previously, we were given descriptions of their nature and role, such as in chapter 21, verses 19 and 20, says, those that are with him, meaning the angels, those that are with him are never too proud to worship him and never grow tired of that. They praise his limitless glory by night and day, tirelessly. Or we have those who are near to your Lord are never too proud to worship him. They exalt his limitless glory and before him alone prostrate themselves. Chapter 7, verse 206. Here, however, we have a reference to their physical appearance. They are endowed with wings two or three or four in pairs, of course. This description does not, however, help us imagine how they look because we do not know anything about their physique or about the form their wings take. We can do no more than take in this description as is without adding anything from our imagination. For anything we may imagine could be wrong. We do not have any definite description of how the angels look from a reliable source. So, we must leave it at the level God has imparted to us, accepting that all knowledge belongs to him. Wings are specified as being in twos or threes and fours, but man knows only two-winged form in all birds. All birds have only two wings. Therefore, the opening verse states that God adds to his creation what he wills. God adds to his creation what he wills, thus making it clear that God's will is free, unlimited to any one form of creation. The number of wings could also be related to the classification of the angels. Of course, regarding the wings, we can say, since angels are metaphysical creatures, they do not have physical wings like that of a bird or plane. And that the verse merely refers to a moving mechanism or moving force a feature that transports the angels from place to place by using these wing-like forces, not just on earth, but in the heavens, as they ascend and descend using this force. That's it. Therefore, in general, we cannot reject the existence of other beings in the universe, perhaps different dimension, because we cannot see them or hear them or smell them through the window of few sensors we possess in our heads. The eye, the nose, and the ear, which are sensors with limited ranges. As I'm sitting here talking, there is air, oxygen, gravity, and radio waves at different frequencies all around me, but I do not see any of them. Unless, of course, I use a device that captures them. However, the universe is far deeper and more complex with many forces in it. To Allah belongs the forces, the armies of the heavens and the earth. Allah is the Almighty and the Wise, chapter 48, verse 7. All the forces that are obedient to Allah, all the forces that are obedient to Allah, otherwise there would be chaos, conflict, and destruction. 
Of course, angels are honorable servants of God, but that does not mean they should be worshipped. They themselves worship Allah. However, we see followers of some sects and re religions in the past and the present, they think of angels as divine beings, hence worship them as directed by their scriptures. There are many verses in the Quran condemning the action of uh, pagan Arabs as they used to think of angels as God's daughters and used to worship them or the idols that symbolize them. On the contrary, the Quran says, Am khalaqnal Or did we create the angels, females, while they were present, while they were watching, while they witnessed? Chapter 37, verse 150. But the Quran describes their devotion to Allah Azza wa Jal. And you shall see the angels encircling the throne, exalting with the praise of their Lord. Chapter 39, verse 7. Or it says, And to Allah prostrate, all that is in the heavens and on earth, whether moving or living creatures or the angels, for none are arrogant before their Lord. Chapter 16, verse 48. Of course, by prostrating, it means formative obedience, which means completing what they are tasked to do perfectly. By nature, angels do not disobey God. By nature, they don't disobey God. In most Christian sects, angel is one of the ognum, or one of the three, where the Holy Spirit, the, the angel, is considered a Godhead, or one God in three persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which forms Trinity, or Taflif, they worship the Holy Spirit as a deity. Quran addresses them. وَلَا تَغُولُ ثَلَاثَةٌ تَحُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ إِنَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ سُبْحَانَهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ وَلَدٌ Do not say Trinity. Seize that is better for you. Allah is the, is the only God. Glory to him. Far exalted is he above having a son. Chapter 4, verse 171. To summarize, number one, God created angels to serve him and manage, arrange, and execute affairs of this universe and the next. As such, they are honorable servants of God but are not divine and should not be worshipped. Number two, angels carry out without question all the commands of Allah and do not oppose or neglect these commandments in any way. Number three, like everything in the universe, angels are engaged in praising and glorifying Allah day and night and are never tired of it. Number four, they carry out their functions honestly, efficiently, and responsibly, without arrogance. Number five, they protect us. Number six, they record deeds or keep our records. Number seven, the number and names of angels are only known to Allah. However, four of them are well known to us. Angel Gabriel, or Jibreel, who conveys Allah's revelation to messengers uh, of Allah. Israfil, Mikael, and Israel. That's it. In conclusion, 
we should believe that while we witness the human lives evolving with all the changes and the progress, there are forces that are beyond our human perception, which contribute or control things in order to keep all things in balance and order. These are angels who are God's officials and have been tasked to do certain things based on God's plan and direction with purpose. As Alexander Operin, who was a Russian biochemist, notably for his theories about life's origin, and for his book, which is called The Origin of Life, who said he believed in the process of evolution in the world, but these evolvements are based on intelligent design or guidance. Without the guidance, the evolvement would not have advanced mankind to the point he has reached today. There is definitely intelligence guiding and arranging it. So, the mere mention of the angels in the Qur'an is not without a purpose. All angels' activities and their mentions in the Qur'an relate to human life one way or another. In other words, if angels had nothing to do with humans, the Qur'an most likely would not even mention them. They are very much involved in human lives in this world as well as the next. Finally, what better way to end the session by three beautiful verses that give the great news to the believers as follows. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَغَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْسَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ In the case of those who say, Our Lord is Allah, and then stand straight and steadfast, the angels descend on them from time to time and say, Fear not, nor grieve, but hear glad tidings of paradise, Jannah, which you are promised. We are your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. There you will have all that your souls desire, and there you will have all that which you ask for, a hospitable gift from oft forgiving, most merciful. Chapter 41, verses 30 through 32. We ask Allah to make us among these believers. We ask Allah to make us among those who are greeted and welcomed by the angels in that day. We ask Allah to remove from our hearts and minds any doubts, shubahat, regarding his deen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa lastri inna l-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sal.